I am honored to introduce our special speaker today, Dr. Fema M. Abamo. Dr. Abamo is a faculty member of the Biology Department of the College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics at Mindanao State University, Marawi City. She is concurrently the Director of Research of the Mamitua Saber Research and Technology Center. She obtained her PhD in biology uh, in 2008 from Yamaguchi University, Japan, uh, under the Monbuka Gakusho Scholarship. She received her MS Biology degree from UP Diliman in 2000, in year 2000, through a DOSD Picastar Scholarship. She graduated cum laude in BS Biology from MSU Marawi in 1991. She's a researcher and a teacher, and her fields of expertise include symbiosis, cell and molecular biology, ciliate protozoology, and monoclonal antibody production. She is also a certified biosafety officer. Her notable projects include ciliate research funded by the NRCP, Meranao Ethnomedicine, and bioassays, bioassays by DBM. She is currently determining the levels of genotoxic hazards in post-siege Lanao Lake with the support of the OSD PCHRD. Her research outputs have been presented locally and internationally and have been published in refereed uh, journals. So ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Dr. Fema Abamo. To the director of UPLB Museum of Natural History and the chair of the Biological Sciences Division in RCP, Dr. Marianne P. De Leon, to Sir Florante Cruz, the coordinator of extension, UPLB Museum of Natural History, to colleagues, researchers, students, friends, ladies and gentlemen, my warmest greetings from the island of Mindanao. It is indeed my joy and my privilege to share with you the results of our NRCP funded uh, research project. Uh, part of that is the biodiversity of uh, ciliated protozoans, the hairy animalcules. Now to start with my presentation, let me share with you my PowerPoint. Like to know biodiversity for the zoan silics, the hairy animalcules. Now, where is Lake Lanao? Of course, uh, this is very near to my uh, working place, Mindanao State University, Marawi City. We are campus by the lake. We are overlooking the lake. Now, if you try to look at this map, just in case you would like to visit us here in Mindanao, it's just a one hour drive from Elegant City or mga two hour drive from Lagindingan Airport and the two hour and a half or three hours. Um, before I start with the main presentation, let's have a very brief tour to Marawi, um, MSU Marawi campus. Uh, this is the Dumuka Alonpo Hall, the new administration building. Itong dalawang pictures na to. And this is the Aga Khan Museum. Ito po yung library namin sa baba. Uh, lower right. And this is the old administration building at um, lower left. Ito po yung Mamitua Saber Research and Technology Center where the director of research uh, is taking her office, supported by her able um, research staffs. And this is the golf course of uh, MSU. Marawi campus. This is overlooking the lake. That's why we are campus by the lake. Lake Lanao is habitat for countless flora and fauna. It is uh, the home of 18 to 20 endemic cyprinid species. 
and uh, it supplies about 70 to 80 percent of electrical power uh, needs uh, of Mindanao. Lake Lanao impacts the Maranao culture, Maranao, the people of the lake, because it serves as a source of food and water and even for a sum for livelihood, for religious practices, transport, and even sports. Now this is Lake Lanao before the Marawi siege, and this is after the siege. Ciliated protozoans are one-celled organisms characterized by hair-like structures called cilia. Now, um, itong term na animalcules was actually coined by Antoine van Leeuwenhoek when he first observed microscopic animals in the, or from the rain. Now, part po doon yung mga protozoan or the ciliates. And since the ciliates are hairy, thus I coined them as hairy animalcules. Now, the ciliates are good indicators or bioindicators of organic pollution in any freshwater system. And in fact, their abundance can be utilized to assess the organic pollution in any bodies of water, particularly a lake. Now, organic pollution is usually associated with eutrophication, algal bloom, and fish kills, because eutrophication is over enrichment of any bodies of water within organic pollutants, such as nitrogen and phosphates. Now, whenever um, there is high amount of these nutrients, there would be overgrowth of uh, overgrowth of plants and algae, and such plants and algae. When they die, they would uh, become organic material in the water, and their decomposition would require high amount of would uh, demand high amount of oxygen, causing fish scales due to lack of oxygen in the lake or any bodies of water, thus leading to fish scales. Now, um, useful sources of organic pollution are agricultural waste, residential waste, and industrial. Uh, Waste. However, in Lake Lanao, we don't have any industrial influence. And uh, so the main source of uh, organic pollution in Lake Lanao uh, is actually coming from not, uh, residential uh, waste, not so much even uh, from agricultural waste, if ever there is uh, organic pollution in Lake Lanao. Now, the silates played very significant role in the food chain being the the feeders of uh, bacteria, and they also graze a tiny algae and uh, flagellated microplankton. As to the as to the objectives of the study, we have three. One is the preliminary inventory of silicates in Lake Lanao from eight something sites uh, to monitor the water quality of Lake Lanao using silic abundance in, in five something sites and compare the silic abundance, composition, traffic groups between summer and rainy seasons and between mixing and non-mixing seasons. Methodology. Mm, and these are now our, these were our eight something sites when we did the inventory of silates. It included the Marawi City, the Marantau, Balindong, Binidayan, Masyu, Taraka, Buadikuso, uh, Buntong, and then Litsa and Ramaim. Now, for monitoring of the water quality, we reduce the sampling sites into five, but we still have Marawi City, um, Balindong, Binidayan, Taraka, and uh, Ramaim. The A, B, C, D in here uh, represent uh, four seasons. A is the non-mixing, B is the mixing season, C is the dry season, and the D is the rainy season. These were our photographs when we did sampling in 2016. Here, uh, we made use of the conical plankton net to collect silates. 
Ito actually ay si Professor Kamar Amaril, a PhD student now at IUPLD. He is a project uh, staff of this NRCP funded project. Here he is um, in the middle of the lake, going to one of our sampling sites with the students and uh, colleagues. And some of our photographs in 2017 sampling, students, with so students and faculty members of the College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics of MSU Marawi. And uh, andito po ako in the middle of the lake. Ayan. And uh, something sites po namin sa 2017. As you know, our sampling was halted in 2017 because of Marawi siege. But we were given chance to resume in 2018. And 2019, one year later after the siege, Ayan, sumakasamahan ko po si team, nagbabago na po. And then, at this time, we need the presence of the military escorts no, to go to our sampling sites. Ayan po ako. Wearing the red uh, backpack, trying to get into the military service. And our sampling activities in 2018 with the faculty, uh, with the colleagues and students. Ayan ako. Again, in the middle of the lake, nasa boat po kami neto. Malapit kami neto sa Taraka uh, sampling sites. Ayan po. Now, we brought our samples to the laboratory. So this is actually the Silita Research Lab still existing in MSU Parawi. Today, um, dito po namin dinadala yung mga Silita samples namin. And then, um, after collection, we culture some in the heat infusion medium for live um, observation. But of course, for um, Scoring of abundance, we fixed immediately at the sampling site by making use of this uh, formula, formalin acidified global iodine. After which, we did a microscopic observation for identification and then, of course, counting oscillates for scoring of abundance. We made use of different uh, identification keys to identify the silates. These are the identification hints that help us a lot in the identification of the silates. Primarily, the presence of cilia. And then follows the morphology and size, the movement of the silates, the silation pattern or the direction. And we also look for fused cilia which make uh, cilia very visible, like serai. Uh, oftentimes, they will make use of the serai as their walking legs. And then the membranelles, usually the membranelles are few cilia uh, found around their mouth. And then the shape and the number of the macrono macronuclei and micronuclei in the contractile vacuoles. As to the silate abundance, we make use of the formula introduced by Harris et al. Um, abundance is equal to the number of silates counted per given volume of water that we collected from the sampling sites. Now, to, as to the results and discussion, A total of 52 morphologically distinct silates were accounted in the study and they were classified across 47 genera. So these were the 47 genera observed. Silates uh, belonging to genera Verticella, Tetrahymena, and Paramecium are those with cosmopolitan distribution such that they can be found in all sampling sites. 
I have here uh, video clips of those uh, silics with cosmopolitan distribution. Uh, this one is the Verticella species. They are bell shaped with stalk and they can easily retract their uh, body by making use of their contractile stalk. Ayan po. And another one I have here, the Tetrahymena. It can easily be distinguished by having a, an egg shape with undulating membrane or membranelles around its uh, vocal cavity or mouth. And uh, of course, the Paramecium caudatum, one of my favorite silics, a very slippery uh, shape. Uh, Silics. Malaki din po ito, around uh, 200 to uh, 300 micrometers po in length. Now, uh, the silates or protozoan silates were classified under kingdom or are classified under kingdom protista, phylum silophora, and the uh, forjan et al the phylum Celiophora were subdivided into three subphyla, namely oligohymenophora, the polyhymenophora, and the kinetophragminophora. However, for cords, curds, and curds et al, they were classified under uh, classes. In this study, 17 oligohymenophorans were accounted, and the distinguishing features of the silates include uh, the presence of the ventral groove, which contains the mouth or the cytosome, and the membranelles or the fused membrane found in the mouth would curve in a counterclockwise direction. Now, most members of this group have uniform body ciliation. And uh, they may have um, adhesive disc or they may have lorica. Lorec uh, Loricas are somewhat like a shell that would encase them, that would enclose uh, the silate or that uh, would also give them protection. Now, these are the silates under oligohymnophorans, the paramecium species and the tetrahymena. So paramecium species are very familiar to us because or they are easily distinguishable because of the slipper shape um, appearance. Another member of this group, the tetrahymena, I already had shown this earlier. And the uh, Cotarnia, Opercularia, and Trichodina are also members of this group. Cotarnia, they are stalked just like Opercularia. Their main difference, Cotarnia had or has Lurica, a transparent uh, shell that enclosed the cilia. Opercularia, at one glance, they appear like uh, Verticella, but they are colonial. And the uh, Parang silang rosebud. For trichodina, they are uh, discoid in appearance, and usually they have roots. No, when they move around, and mostly trichodina are a parasitic silics attached to the gills of um, fishes. And other members of this group, the, glyco, uh, the glaucoma, colpidium, opestonecta, and protonia. Glaucoma, it's more of a tetrahymena in appearance, but they are more rounded. No? Parang mas circular sila are more rounded than tetrahymena. And the colpidium, it's a smaller, also appearing like a tetrahymena, but it's more of a bean-shaped uh, silic. Ang opesonecta, if you try to look at them, um, para silang hot dogs. And they have this interesting feature like this one, the uh, big, uh, very visible um, contractile vacuoles. And then the fronton, frontonia. 
they are very similar with the uh, paramecium species. It's just that their structure is uh, more uh, broader at the anterior part or portion of the body and that they are more um, triangular in appearance and they are bigger ciliates also, just like tetrahymena. I mean, not paramecium. Uh, comparing glaucoma and tetrahymena. Ayun. So, as uh, mentioned earlier, um, glaucoma more uh, rounded siya than tetrahymena. So, here is it, um, tetrahymena. So, parashyang teardrop as mentioned earlier. Now, another subphylum, the polyhymenophora, there were 13 genera observed. Enter this a group, and these ciliates have a dural zone of membranes that would wind clockwise around the mouth or into the mouth. And most members of this uh, subphylum have pronounced uh, serai, usually located at the caudal portion or the ventral portion. And uh, they may or they may not have body, a uh, uniform body ciliation. Members of this uh, phylum or subphylum are the following uh, Campanella and the Verticella species. Now they all are um, bell shaped in appearance, and their main difference in this uh, figure is um, size. As you can see, um, vertice uh, the Verticella species tree is the smallest among this group, and most likely this is the Verticella microstoma. And the largest is the Campanilla. Another uh, polyhymenophoran, the Bleparesma species 1 and 2, they just mainly differ in the size. Um, the one, the Bleparesma 1, is bigger than Bleparesma 2. And they appeared as spindle shape, and their end is somewhat uh, pointed or bent. Now, for excitrica, oxytrica, and euplotes, their distinguishing features are the presence of a serai in membranelles. Here you can see their serai at the adoral portion. Ito naman, winding into the mouth, and some are found in the ventral and the caudal, caudal portion of uh, the ciliates. Now for you plot this, and you have a rigid clip of the ciliate that makes use of their serai in walking around. You can see their ventral serai, ayan, ginagamit nila in walking. Um, another member of this a file, a subphylum, a subphylum, the Stylonychia and Onychodromus. Uh, they are very similar. They just differ in uh, size, uh, being um, the Onychodromus being bigger than Stylonychia. It's more rounded, but this one is more on a uh, rectangular in shape. Now for Holistica, it. Uh, it's very similar, similar also to paramecium, but it has a very uh, pronounced uh, um, adoral serai. And for stentor, uh, they are very visible, I mean, distinguishable by uh, having a trumpet shape, and they're also large ciliates. I have here a video clip of Onychodromus together with uh, paramecium species and this onychodromos are also a giant ciliates malalaki din po sila they are even in fact bigger than paramecium species okay so ito po yung onychodromos uh, species Um, additional members of polyhymenophorans are the Strombidium, Halteria, Spirostomum, and Aspidisca. The Strombidium and Halteria are all a jumping ciliates and they are minute. They just differ in the presence of um, 
Sarai on the adoral portion or apical portion of their body. Strombidium na sa apical portion, samanta si Haltoria, aside from the apical portion, at the subapical portion of the body, the cilids are also uh, visible. Now for spirostomum, uh, these are uh, very long or elongated cilids and it's a very visible even without the microscope. It's warm like uh, cilids. While the aspidisca, it also appears like a paramecium, it's just that they have a visible ventral serrae. I have here a video clip of a strong region with the apical cap of cilia, of course, located at the apical portion. Here, a spirostomum is a very visible, it's a very um, distinguishable because of its shape and also. Ayan, a very visible yung cilia. Okay, the last uh, subphylum is the kinetofragminophora. There were 17 genera accounted uh, for in this study that were observed in uh, Lake Lanao. In this group, their distinguishing feature is the absence of cilia at the uh, adult stage, but present only in young developing uh, larval stage. The adults can be free swimming, sicile, or sartorians with sucking tentacles, and the body can have a stalk or supporting stalk, or may not have stalks. Examples of genital fragminophorans are the metasenita, the podopraya, the tocopraya, and the asenita. They are all stock um, ciliates. Metasenita, um, kanyang distinguishing feature is that it has loreca. Okay, and it is the loreca that is stock. And then podopraya, its tentacles are projecting uh, uniformly around its body while the tocopraya, its tentacles are projecting on a topical region and also at the median region while the asinita is also stalked but only at the opposite, uh, opposing um, apical region where we can find their tentacles. And they make use of the tentacles to suck other cilids and other organisms as they're moving. Uh, feeding strategy. Another member of this group, the didinium, ecolips, holopraya, and pulpuda. Ang didinium is viral shape. And the ecolips meron po silang ectodermal plates. And the pulpuda po ay para siyang kidney shape. And holopraya, although it belongs to this group, ang kanya pong Cilids are uniformly distributed around the, you know, it's around its uh, body surfaces. Ang kaibano po, meron silang pharyngeal basket or trichides. Another members of this um, group, the Litonotus, Dileptus, and Loxodes, as well as Ispatidium. Uh, they are all elongated uh, cilids, and of course, the differ in shape and uh, in appearance. And the uh, etong dileptus para siyang sigmoid in shape. And the espatidium, uh, it looks like a spatula. Now, the chylodinella and trachelius. A chylodinella is uh, very distinguishable by the presence of indented uh, vestibule, while the trachelius para siyang maliit na yukilini. This is the result of the spatiotemporal variation of silate composition and feeding or the feeding, feeding or topic groups in, uh, observed in Lake Rana. In non-mixing season, it was the verticella species that dominated. While in, uh, in mixing season, it was the colleagues who dominated. It's a video clip of the colleagues. 
predominated in the mixing season. Nahita natin dito green. Because of where the grass is just in the grass of an algae. Now, in the dry season, although it was the metasinita who topped the silicon composition, but it was closely followed by other silic species. Okay? There's a shared dominance. Now, in the rainy season, it was solely dominated by the podopria. This is the uh, appearance of the metasinita, while this is a podopria. Now, in terms of feeding group composition, in the non-mixing season, um, it was the bactivirus or bacterivorous diet who dominated, although my presence naman po ng carnivorous and uh, omni-algivorous diet. However, in the mixing season, if you would uh, notice, somehow tumataas po ang omni-algivorous diet, suggesting that uh, not only the detritus food chain uh, prevalent at that particular season, as well as, uh, but also the, the grazing food chain is also observed, suggesting that there is a growth of or increase growth of algae in this particular season, the mixing season. Now for the dry season, there is a shared dominance between bacterivorous and um, carnivorous diet and also the dry and, and also the omni algivorous uh, diet. So basically, lahat po ng feeding strategies nakikita natin sa dry season. However, in the rainy season, uh, there is a shift in the feeding uh, dominance wherein it was the carnivorous who dominated. Carnivorous silate is referring to silate that would feed on another silates. Ang ibig sabihin po nito, uh, madami po or tumas po ang a number of silates that would feed the preys, which are also silates. So let's talk about this patch of temporal variation of silate abundance in Lake Lanao. This um, silate abundance was used to monitor the water quality uh, of uh, Lake Lanao in five something sites. Now, this was based on the study of Beaver and Grisman, wherein they uh, classified the lake into five tropic states according to or based on the uh, abundances of sea lakes observed in a particular lake. For instance, if the range of uh, sea lake abundance would be two or below, two cells per ml or below, it would indicate an ultra oligotrophic condition of the lake. If the silate abundance would be around 55 to 145 cells per ml, then it would indicate a eutrophic lake condition. Now, this is the silate abundance we gathered from different sampling sites and seasons in Lake Lanao. And uh, Abundance were expressed uh, into the number of cells per cubic meter. Now, how are we going to look at this data? One approach maybe is by looking at the highest uh, abundance value of uh, silate abundance in Lake Lanao. In this case, we have the Balindong having the highest abundance in the littoral. A zone during dry season. Now, if we're going to compare this with the set range of abundances by Beaver and Grisman, other value is actually, their units is actually cells per ml, where our study, we express it into cells per cubic meter, thus you need to convert that into cells per ml. So the highest uh, abundance we gathered became 0.0061 cells per ml since this is the highest abundance we observe from all 
sampling sites across uh, seasons. It would mean then that the value of abundance fell below the set range for ultra oligotrophic condition of the lake. So what is an ultra oligotrophic uh, tropic state of the lake? Meron po tayong description dito for, old, uh, for oligotropic lake. So pag sinabing ultra-oligo, it is a very oligotrophic. Thus, an ultra-oligotrophic condition of the lake would mean a very low dissolved nutrients, a very sparse growth of algae, a very high oxygen content, and very low organic matter that the lake canal is still healthy, far from undergoing algal bloom or eutrophication. In shorter terms, lake canal is not organically polluted. Now, there were uh, solid abundance studies in the past. For instance, um, the study of Madonna, Madonna in 2005 wherein they were able to gather 9 to 23 cells per ml, which indicative of a mesotropic uh, river condition. And then Simic et al. in 1995, uh, they studied um, a trophic air reservoir, which had a cell density or abundance of 50 or 5 to 70 cells per ml. Now, the data were subjected to statistical tests and the variation of silates uh, across seasons were actually significant, being the non-mixing season having the lowest abundance compared to the mixing dry and rainy seasons, which had higher abundance. Now, the fluctuations in nutrient contents and organic lo load in the lake as seasons change passively influence the spatiotemporal variation absolute composition and abundance in the lake. Higher abundance in the rainy season, as you have seen in the study, could be due to the increase of nitrogen and phosphorus washed into the lake by the rain action. Now, as to the summary and conclusion, we were able to gather um, or account 52 morphologically distinct select species and classified under 42 genera Silate abundance, composition, and trophic groups uh, did vary across, vary across sites and seasons. And the silate abundance indicated that Lake Lanao is an ultra oligotrophic lake such that it is still healthy, well oxygenated, and low in organic load during sampling. So our recommendation to the local government units, they should be informed about the good uh, news of the results of the study that the lake is still healthy and that it's not organically polluted and that we suggested to them that hope they would strengthen their policies so that the healthy conditions of Lake Lanao can be maintained. I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, National Research Council of the Philippines for funding our research study, our research project. And then, of course, the president of MSU Marawi, uh, President Habib Watamama Makaayong for uh, supporting our research in Davor, and of course, MSU IIT and their Chancellor Tangol for being the program leader of, the, of this uh, program, research program, and my Mamitua Saber Research and Technology Family and uh, my Biology Department Family, CNSM and Ashimura. Thank you very much, Ma'am Fem, for that uh, presentation and for sharing your knowledge and uh, research outputs on the uh, ciliate um, diversity and other uh, information that you have with regards to Lanao Lake. And uh, for that, we are... Uh, awarding you virtually uh, a certificate of recognition and it reads um, 
the Museum of Natural History, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research and Extension here at UP Los Baños, awards this certificate of recognition to Dr. Fema M. Abamo for serving as the resource person during the 2021 MH Biodiversity Seminar on Lake Lanao Biodiversity, Protozoan Ciliates, the Hairy Animal Cues, held today, um, May 12, 2021, from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Uh, Philippine Standard Time via Zoom. And in witness whereof, the signature of the director is here unto a fixed uh, sign, uh, Dr. Marian P. De Leon. Maraming salamat po, Ma'am Fem, for that wonderful presentation. Welcome po, and thank you for inviting me. It's really thank my honor and my privilege to share. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you po.